Welcome everybody and thanks for attending today's webinar, Realizing Efficiencies with GIS in the Office and in the Field. Based on feedback from our last webinar, we've set this webinar up to answer some specific questions and demonstrate some very specific workflows. I'm Brent Jones, a Land Records Industry Manager here at Esri, and we've got a couple of really sharp presenters today, J.D. Overton and Kevin Ruggiero who will discuss how to use your GIS to identify areas or properties that require additional review and may warrant a field visit. We'll discuss how to prioritize, schedule, and execute work in the field using the ArcGIS platform. Although we're talking specifically about assessor or appraiser workflows here, what you see is all cuts right out of the box and, and can be configured easily for, for other applications. Please note that we'll be recording this today so you can refer back to this recording or forward it to a colleague. Past webinars are recorded also if you'd like uh, to access them. A system of record is used to efficiently record, securely manage, and accurately report your data. This can be property characteristics, tax parcels, and values. ArcGIS manages the record of ownership, the value, and location. In many jurisdictions, all these responsibilities are fall under the, the assessor. For those of you that attend the Land Records Meetup, thanks for joining today because we know you are the guys that man, maintain the system of record in the parcel fabric. Systems of engagement with taxpayers have evolved over time. It wasn't too long ago that having property cards and tax maps in the front office for, for the public to view was the system of engagement. That's all very different now. The system of engagement is a two-way conversation using technology that everyone is comfortable with, smartphones, tablets, and web browsers. And we're sharing out more data, and we're asking for information from the public. For example, if there's an address mistake, we can easily solicit input from the public to verify and help us correct it. If you're not modernized here, there's a lot of opportunities, and this can be a quick win. In property assessment, ArcGIS provides a system of insight to help you understand and visualize how certain property characteristics combined with location impact value. You can leverage external data sets, for example. You can do a trade market analysis to compare big box store values to help you defend appeals. The modeling and analysis capabilities are almost limitless here. We're only going to touch on this today, uh, and we're going to use this to help us efficiently identify, prioritize, and schedule field inspections. ArcGIS is a system of systems. It's the system of record, the system of engagement, and the system of insight in a single platform. Enabling these systems across your organization helps you make better decisions, understand the status of work, allocate personnel more effectively, and work more efficiently. This Systems of Systems, or platform, is also a platform for deploying apps, focused applications designed to run on any device and accomplish specific tax, tasks in the field, in the office, and for engagement with your community. Apps are the modern way to deploy new capabilities to your organization quickly and efficiently and give you access to your system anywhere, anytime, and on any device. We organize these apps combined with core ArcGIS workflows, capabilities, and standards using best practices and customer input to create domain-specific solutions. As you can see, there are a dozen solutions which use hundreds of apps. Many apps, used by, many apps are used by assessors, but today we're only going to focus on just a few. Workforce for scheduling, operations dashboard for understanding the status of work in your organization, navigator for efficiently routing field appraisers, and collector and survey123 for collecting data in the field. ArcGIS for Assessment delivers solutions in four key areas, land records and parcel management, field operations, analytical capabilities for understanding and modeling value, 
in public relations or public engagement. Today, using ArcGIS Pro, we're going to show areas where you may want to do some analysis to uncover potential issues that require a field visit, then show how to efficiently schedule, route, manage, and track field work. Many jurisdictions report over 60% of their appraiser time is spent in the field, so it makes good sense that this is a good place to start to modernize and realize efficiencies. All right, now over to you, JD. All right, thanks, Brent. So I'd like to take a few minutes and discuss spatial analysis. So this can be thought of, in a sense, as a language. Many users are familiar with editing, making, and using maps. However, they may still be new to spatial analysis. To help with this, we've created an ebook that you can download to learn more. So I've included a link here, and I believe Bren is posting that in the chat window as well. So regardless of the industry, putting data on a map often shows you immediately how you can see spatial patterns and relationships that you just can't see in a spreadsheet, a table, or a report. This language consists of a core set of questions that we ask, a vocabulary that organizes and expands our understanding, and the fundamental steps to spatial analysis that really embody how we solve spatial problems. So the vocabulary of spatial analysis consists really of six categories. And this ebook helps you know how to access the tools in ArcGIS to utilize these. It also helps you to communicate and let others know about these tools and capabilities as well. That way they know when they need to seek out help or your assistance beyond just making maps. Or maybe your role is to enable others to use these tools too. There are many ways ArcGIS provides access to spatial analysis to people that are not GIS professionals. And the more people using these tools, the more benefit to your land records organization. So here we can see, uh, I actually, in ArcGIS Pro, I have some data loaded. And the first step in visualization and doing spatial analysis is to get your property characteristic data into ArcGIS. And so here you see a portion of the of the table, uh, including property characteristics for some parcel data that we have. So whether that's through ETL, whether that's through a database view, whether that's just joining parcel polygons to tabular data, the first step is getting that data into ArcGIS. So another thing that we can do with this, a lot of the times these fields uh, that, that hold values uh, are numeric fields. And we provide you with some very simple ways to change the format of these to make them really simple to read. So for example, we can change some of these numeric values like current assessed value to use a currency format. And so when I apply this format to the currency, this is basically just applying this view essentially to the client side application or what we're going to use here in ArcGIS Pro, making it really easy to read these attribute values uh, in tables and in charts and so forth. So looking at the map in detail here, what we see are some of the powerful capabilities you can do by creating simple thematic maps using your KEMA data and property characteristics variables. So here you see a subject assessment neighborhood that's been symbolized on current assessed value. So I've applied a definition query for a specific assessment neighborhood which in other words is like just applying a filter to the visible data. So in the upper left corner, we see that I've applied this de uh, definition query for neighborhood 1278. We can look at uh, just a simple natural breaks classification. There's many different ways that we can break down this data, but you can really start to just immediately see the variation of assessed value in this particular neighborhood. So a couple of things to note here is that we might actually start to see where the outliers are. So if we look in this upper right-hand corner here, uh, or in the, the mid-right-hand side of this uh, neighborhood, we see a red polygon, which means that this could be a very highly uh, assessed property, uh, and it may actually be an outlier. So we might want to take a little closer look at that. Also, what we're looking at here is in the middle, 
uh, it may be hiding, but we have these little black labels that indicate the sales ratios that have been calculated for recent sales that are here. So these sales might trigger field assessments to go do evaluations to uh, check to see what the, the latest values of these are. So one of the, the characteristics of display is finding these outliers. Uh, so if I click on one of these outliers, we can see the formatting applied that I've applied there to the field. So now that we, these values that were numeric are, are very easy to read, we can see the current taxable value, the change between the assessed value and the previous cycle, and start to really start to understand uh, how this, this uh, particular property relates to its surroundings. So if we wanted to go into further detail, we can reach into ArcGIS's rich geoprocessing toolboxes and then put together some elaborate models uh, to calculate things. And so the model that we're actually seeing here uh, is a model that was created by Dan Faustine, and he did a webinar with us last spring on value analysis and discuss this model in detail, but what it does is it calculates the coefficient of dispersion within uh, a neighborhood for a group of selected sales. So now what we could do uh, further uh, with this, so we could do some analysis, so I could publish this map, so the map that you see here basically is enabling sales, enabling foreclosures, appeals. Uh, now notice that these uh, foreclosure sales and appeals are actually being rendered as point symbols, uh, not as the full polygon shape. One, it makes them very easy to see, very lightweight, easy to calculate. Uh, and so it's just a display technique that you might want to consider with some of uh, the KMA variables uh, within your property data. We also have here, we've done some summary statistics on the assessment neighborhoods, which are the color codings that you see in the back. And so using the, the share as web layer, we can share this organization as map and feature services that can be consumed by others throughout the organization and deployed in field devices that can power uh, mobile workflows. So we can also, with this map services, once they're published, we can deliver very powerful tools for visualization for the assessor and, and uh, the assessment people within the, or, with the office using a tool called the Operations Dashboard for ArcGIS. So here you can see that we've created this interactive dis display where we can select things in the dashboard and it actually drives a series of widgets that will summarize and report statistics uh, about data as you as you click on things. So now what I'd like to do is turn it over to Kevin and Kevin's going to talk to us about how we can mobilize field appraisal work uh, using workforce. Kevin? All right, thanks JD. Let me just change my presenter. Okay, so as we talked about at the beginning, we're, we're going to show um, COTS applications, out-of-the-box apps that we want to show here. Um, so this, this slide I'm showing right now is um, basically an organization of our COTS apps that are available at solutions.arcgis.com, and they're broken down by local government, state government, utilities, etc. Um, this is um, this this is set up for um, as I mentioned before. These are real apps. They're developed in collaboration with real customers to meet real needs. And I'm sure that many of these needs also exist in your organization, such as cities, counties, um, fire departments, police departments, state, etc. By deploying the ArcGIS solution maps and apps, you'll be able to meet many of the needs that you that you would normally have to have a developer do for you. So you save a lot of time and energy. So Workforce is the concept that I'm going to talk about today. And it's Workforce for ArcGIS, which enables common view in the field and in the office. By doing your analysis in the, in the office, such as JD just showed us, 
um, we have a number of tools that we can use. So we can plan what locations need to be investigated and assigned. Um, using the dispatch map, you can coordinate all your work by setting up assignments. And I'll cover this in more detail shortly. Now you can coordinate your workforce in one application. Um, and optimizing your operations consists of five tasks. <clears throat> one is first a plan, which is you plan your work for field assessors, inspectors, construction status, etc. And this just doesn't have to apply to field appraisers. This could be other inspections in other in other vertical markets or other areas of your of your organization. Uh, number two, you can coordinate. So that's where you can decide on who is doing what work, what role they have, and where these locations um, in the field the staff must visit. Um, the third uh, topic is, is navigate, and this is the best way to route to where I need to go. Now, in some instances, you know, assessors really understand their areas and they know, but in some areas you may have to get into areas where you're not familiar with where navigating really supports your operations. The fourth is to capture. So capture data from the field and send it directly to the office. This avoids duplicated work. It avoids multiple trips to the same location or neighborhood. And then the fifth um, is to monitor, where you can monitor where work is going on, um, the status of the work, and if I have to send another assignment out or plan accordingly. So there may be an instance where uh, the appraiser is out in the field and something happens in the office and something needs to get checked and rather than having that appraiser come back to the office, you can send a job out to them out in the field. So now you have the, all the information that, you're, that you need to support your, your analysis with. So because we use our, because all these applications fit together, such as plan for ArcGIS Desktop or GIS Pro, um, coordinate with work workforce, and navigating with, with ArcGIS, with Navigator for ArcGIS, you can, use your, you can also use your own data, you can work disconnected, and you can optimize routes. And this will also assist if you, uh, if you have staff that, has, that needs to go to a location that wasn't part of the original assignments. So we have a number of ways to collect data from the field and capture it. Um, one is collector for ArcGIS. And um, this, this does disconnect, support disconnect um, collecting, so you can collect data, and if you're in a dead area, once you come back, you can sync up, and you can support external receivers for improved spatial accuracy, et cetera. The other is um, uh, Survey123 for ArcGIS, which is like smart forms in the field, so it leverages ArcGIS online and ArcGIS Enterprise security models. It's built online or with ArcGIS Desktop. It supports XLS form specifications. And these can also be used for public health, such as restaurant inspections, for emergency response, such as damage assessment, which would be like a damage assessment. You need somebody to go out and do a real quick perimeter survey of like a forest fire or a flood. Um, that comes in really handy with that kind of work because they're easy to create and deploy. And then you can do field assess asset inspections, such as fire hydrants or uh, sign reflection or any of those applications that you may have in the local government. The third way we have to collect data is um, drone to map for ArcGIS, which is image products on demand. So you can do asset inspections, uh, monitoring, land analysis. Um, and you could do areas where drones are, are legal and you don't have to have and you don't have access to inspect the property, um, map updating from the drone. Um, we have clients that use drone to map um, for, for instance, let's say you have um, the last time your aerial photography was flown, um, there was a, a field and now it's a new Starbucks and you wanna go out and update your imagery, you could fly the drone, um, capture that image and merge it back into your base image so now you updated your image map without having to go out and refly your whole entire county. So this is where um, drone to map really comes in and um, or updates on projects on the fly. Um, it's a real powerful product. So work for GIS, um, 
the op users that also can feed data back to the operations dashboard. So here's where you can monitor and track and assess your daily operations. And with operations dashboards, you can monitor work that's in the field and monitor work that's going on in the office. So for Workforce for ArcGIS, um, it's Workforce optimizes, it's, it's an efficient plan and assign work. You receive assignments, you report statuses from the field, and to access this application, you go to workforce.arcgis.com and um, you sign in with your identity um, for ArcGIS online and you're off and running. Um, so for the planning part of our of, of this application, you have focus on work management in ArcGIS platform. Um, create, prioritize, and assign work. You can manage planned work assignments. You react and respond to unplanned work. You can also integrate with other systems such as camera, or you may want to bring data down in an ETL um, from one system into the other. And as you can see here, I'm showing you where we can ETL in back and forth into another system or from another system. You can assign work, and then when the work is completed, it's reported back to, um, to, the, to the system and updated on the map. So you can also, um, administering workforce projects, there's basic steps for setting up a workforce. One is you create a new workforce project, and then you configure assignment types, so you could have appraisers or you could have other types of inspectors out there and you can set a type for each one of those. You can add dispatchers or you can add mobile workers and they can have a contact number, a job title, and they can add notes um, what needs to be reported, what needs to be completed at each location. Um, the other is configure maps and layers. So you can add your own data to the dispatch and worker maps. You can figure your data to use as the geocoding source if you don't want to use an address. So an example of that would be a lot of times field assessors use the parcel number as opposed to an address. So you could, with the source data that you're using, you can use that as your geocoder instead of typing the address in so you know you're going to get to the parcel. Um, and then you can figure, configure the application. And I'm going to run through this in a, in a couple minutes here. So you dispatch work, you can create new work assignments by geocoding or using the map or from features or automatically. So you have a feed going out and have them send, send updates to people out in the field. You assign, you can reassign, or you can cancel work. You can do it individually or you can do it in bulk. Um, you can filter and sort on work assignments. So you may have different classes of work that's going on out in the field. So you can sort those out. You can also view all mobile workers at one time where you can search the map for a particular job. You can also coordinate. So we can coordinate. We can view and complete work assignments. We can organize a work list. We can receive notifications from the field. So there may be an instance where you can't get access to a property or you had a scheduled date with a, with a homeowner and maybe they didn't put the dog away and it's in the backyard and you, got, you can't actually do the work that you need to do so you have to reschedule so you can report that back to your chief assessor um, so they can see an update so they know that you're going to have to skip that job and come back to it another day. You can set your working status. Um, you can add and edit notes and you can view reference detachments. So you may have a document management system that you need a copy of the deed or you may need a copy of a building permit and you can link to those and pull them right down on your mobile device without going out with paper. The other thing that workforce is, uh, drives, what drives workforce is the work assignments. So properties of work assignments are things such as status, um, due date, the priority, does it have a low priority or do you need to do it right away? Um, signee and the type, 
And then there's different states of the of the of the assignment also, which is unassigned, assigned, or in progress. Is it paused? Is it completed? Is it declined? And each one of these actions records a time and date stamp so that you can track it in your system. So it's a good a good um, source to back yourself up if if uh, if a taxpayer or a property owner doesn't know if you were at the property or not, you can always look back and verify the date and time of when you visited that property. You can set your priorities, as I said before, to none, low, medium, high, or critical. And then you can also add attachments such as documents and pictures. So there's also a dispatch mobile workers there's dispatchers and there's mobile workers so there's worker details such as contract number title and notes <clears throat> there's worker status which is working or on break or not working and then there's worker locations such as current location or location tracks location tracks would be um, where was i at um, how long was i at a particular spot doing work and so you almost can track your whole day And then with integrated with ArcGIS app, so you can get the location of your work assignments using Navigator for ArcGIS. So we can open Navigator up and create a route to where I have to go to, and then send it back and return to the workforce at the destination. We can also collect, complete your, your work using Collector for ArcGIS, and get, so you can complete it doing that way. And again, you send it back to Workforce when it's finished. When you create a Workforce project, there's a number of things that go on, and I'll show you this in a couple minutes, um, that get created in, into, your, into your project. And this is what they look like. So you have, a, you have your maps, which is a blank dispatcher web map gets created, and it has a dispatcher um, schema, as you see on this chart. And then your assignment, you get assignment schema that contains all the attributes of the work of needed that's needed to do the work. You have all your domains, which is your work status, your assigned status, your priority, and your assignment type. And then you have your layers, such as dispatchers, workers, assignments, location tracking, and your project group and your project folder. And so there's lots of opportunities for you to use workforce with, within your organization. Um, which for small organizations, there's a, a location solution to replace paper-based workflows. Um, work seamlessly with, with ArcGIS apps for in the field. Um, mid to large size organizations complement work management systems. So you can integrate with your CAMA, your homegrown tax system, SAP, um, property characteristics database or, or an Excel. Um, there's partner opportunities, system integrators, and custom solutions. And integration with other systems such as an ETL process that would allow you to move data into the LGIM if you're not using it. Um, it's not a requirement to use the LGIM, but it does keep the data consistent for deploying all of our other apps. So you don't have to be like in the parcel fabric or something to load your parcels into the LGIM. You can be sitting out in a features class and use ArcGIS Pro um, to ETL your data into the local government information model. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump out and um, show you uh, a demo. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a project. So I'm going to call this project um, webinar demo. And we'll just create it. So this is going to create the blank header and all my um, web maps that I'm going to need to implement my, my application. And what this does, this will add a folder 
to your organization in ArcGIS Online. So if we go out, <clears throat> once this completes, um, I have a webinar, I have this set up for webinar demo, and this is basically the wizard that takes you through. So I'm going to set my assignment type up. So I want to enter a new type, so I'm going to do um, an assessment, assessor, and we'll add that type. So now I have my type set up, and then I can add a mobile worker. So I can come in here, and this goes on your ArcGIS Online. So if I do myself, and I want to set up a role as a mobile worker, I can set myself up as a mobile worker, and I can add that user. So now if I look down here, I have a dispatcher. Of course, I'm me, and I'm playing my own self as a dispatcher and a mobile worker at the same time. But this could be your chief assessor, and this would be you uh, as a field person. And then I don't need to add any more dispatchers, so I'm just going to skip this step. So now we've kind of completed that. Um, but what I want to do now is I want to go back over here. And let me refresh my ArcGIS Online. And there should be a webinar demo that just got created. So here's all of my information that just got created for me um, on the fly. Um, so all the information that I need to run my mobile application is now in my folder and I'm ready to go. So if I go back to workforce and I open this project, I don't have any assignments, I don't have anything running here right now. So what I want to do is I want to go back to my projects and if I look at my webinar demo, I can configure this. And when I hit the configure button, what it does is it opens up my dispatcher map and it adds some of my data that I need in there, my workers and my assignments, but I want to add where I'm actually doing my work at. So I'm going to go out, search for my layers, I'm going to go to my content, and I'm just going to type in some data that's near and dear to us. Um, so we'll select that information. And it's going to add my information. I can downloading layers. But now I'm going to feed off of what JD did. So he was in a neighborhood 1278. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a definition query. And um, I want to go by my neighborhood code is equal to 1278. And I'm going to apply that filter. So now I'm focused in on that neighborhood. So this way you're not cluttering your, your devices and stuff with all of your county's data. So if you're a real big county where you have over a million parcels, um, you know, you could filter these down by, by sections. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to choose um, what I want to do. I'm going to do this based on um, assess value. And I'm going to do my graduated colors. And I'm going to try and match it up pretty close to what JD did on his side. So I'm going to set five natural breaks. And I'm going to set my symbology here. And I'm going to flip it so my red parcels are the ones that I'm interested in searching. So now if I do OK, and I'm done, I save this. Now I have my dispatcher map all set up and ready to go. Um, and if I zoom in, you know, here's my highlighted red parcels that were relevant on JD's presentation also. So let's save this guy. And now I'm going to go back out to my project. And this is your project interface. So I'm going to come and do my worker map, the same thing. Now I could have a service up and just tie to that service. But I just wanted to take you through um, what I'm actually doing so you really understand what's actually going on in the background. So I'm going to go back to my content and do the same thing on Naperville here also. And we're just going to do the same filtering again on this guy. And then what we'll do is um, I'm going to set my filter. 
my neighborhood code is 1278. Apply that. So we're back in the same world. And then I'm going to come back in and do my assess value and make this match everything that was on the last one. So I'm going to do five natural breaks. And I'm going to grab this guy here and flip it and do OK. So now I have two maps that look the same. And these are the maps that my mobile app will use when I'm out in the field. Now, I talked about earlier how you can set your data up so you can use your, your data for your web map that you need for your geocoding. So if I come over to my web map, so here's my two web maps that we just did. I can open up my item details. And if you go over to settings, I can scroll down here. And here is where, you know, by address, it would just default to, let, to by address. If I come in and I click by layer, I can add a layer. And the layers that are on my web maps are the ones that you're allowed to geocode to. So I'm going to do this. And I want it to be on the parcel number just contained and save. So now when I do my search, I can plug a parcel number in there and it'll find it just like I'm doing um, an address lookup. So now we're going to go back and we're going to do the same thing to the workers one. So we can search both at the same, you know, by, by parcel number. So if I do by layer, I can do Naperville and Parcel identification and save it. So now I have both of my apps are ready to go. So now if I come over to workforce, this guy's saved. <clears throat> now I can open my project up. And I can start adding assignments. So what I want to do here is I can say assignment, and I want an assignment type. Well, I only set up assessor. If you had multiple users here, you could have a list. This is where assessor or inspector or um, zoning code official or whatever would be in this. And then my location, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type my parcel number in here. So I just type OA. Um, I'm going to grab this guy. And boom, it takes me right to that parcel. I create the assignment. Now I can set my priorities to high. I can set my due date to today. And I want to set it for, well, we're on the East Coast. So it's like uh, 20 of 2 here. So I'm going to set this for like, I need this done by 3. And I can set an ID number up here myself. So I'm going to say this is survey 1. Or I could get a feed if it was a work work system, I could get a permit number or something, and I could just say verify, verify uh, camera data in field. So I'm just going to go out and do a field inspection just to see why is that guy red in that neighborhood, and why does he stand out so much as opposed to everybody else? Did, did he have a, um, a detached building that was there and now it's not there, or is there some um, bad value with the square footage of the house or something. So now I can create an assignment. And then what this does, it creates an assignment. Now I can go back to my assignments and I can add another one. So let's add another one. And I'm going to do my assessor and my location. And I'm going to pick up, um, LA, let's do 12. And I'm going to create an assignment there. And <clears throat> I have assigned to me. And I can also do hi. And today, and I'm going to set the time for 4 o'clock. And this is 2. And I'm just going to say verify. Okay. Information. 
create an assignment. <clears throat> now, I want you to come back here and edit some of these because, for instance, in this one, I never set up my um, who it's going to go to. But you can come in here and I can set this up for the assignee and I can set him to be me too. Just for me, I could filter them or I could clear the filter and show both. So what I'm going to do now is I can come over onto my phone and what I can do is I can log into my ArcGIS Online account. Which I'm doing now. I, I would show you this, but I don't want to, I want to stay, I want to keep the, um, I don't want to jump back and forth too much here. So I just want to, so I'll do my stuff on my phone and then you'll see the map change as I do it. So if I do carry journal, I'll, and I sign in, now I see in my, in my list, I see the assignment that's assigned to me. So what I'm going to do is go out and I'm going to click on that and on my phone it takes me right to that particular point. And once I hit start on my phone, you're going to see my assessor where my KR is, you're going to see that go and it's going to change its status from not being worked. Now you see the turn green and it's in progress. So now it's already started. So I'm going to say um, verifying um, camera data from the parcel. And I'm going to save that. And when I save it, you're going to see a little box come up here. And now you can see it. You already got the feedback that I'm sending from my phone on the, on the workforce application. Now when I click finish, what this is going to do, it's going to come through and it's going to change my status from in progress to completed. It takes about 10 or 15 seconds or so. Now it's done. It's in progress. Now it goes to completed. So now this is a real easy way to monitor your data and so you can see on this parcel it has the red dot in the middle now that means it was completed so I could come up here I could also do this one um, I could sort them by their status so if I had like 20 or 30 jobs out there I could sort by due date I could sort, sort by overdue I could sort by priority I could sort by assigned <clears throat> etc so on the flip side of that, I have all this information going on, but then in the background, I could be in the office and I could have an operation dashboard running that shows me all of my current jobs that are out in the field and the status and who's working. So I know that in this case, Veronica, Matt, I have all these guys out in the field doing work and I'm reporting them back live as these all happen. So here's our, here's like 11 jobs where the status is pending, so I may be waiting on something. I have 16 jobs out there that the status is open. That are, these are assigned and these are completed. And I can zoom these out and I can get a better view of what's going on out in my field from a, from a very easy interface to use. Um, and I can also, with my dashboard, I have some tools where I can change my background. I can add imagery on the back. Um, I could also select features or I could filter features based on any of the criteria. I also have ways to add widgets where I can change these widgets so I can look and I can see, you know, this particular job is still pending. Here's the assess value and here's a picture of where it's at. And I could also look at property information and splits and merges. So there's a number of different ways you can use these dashboards to monitor your work coming in from the field um, at any given point in time. So now I'm going to go back to my presentation. And what I want to do now is give you some 
of our, where our resources are for this data, for these apps. So if I come in here, you know, it's about a considerations you should take when you're when you're looking at and doing this. You're understanding the current ArcGIS solutions provide flexible methods for meeting a variety of needs without developing custom applications. The backbone to these apps is the local government information model, as I said before. So if you, if you load that into your model, um, these applications will just fire up and you don't have to do any um, attribute changes. ArcGIS solutions consist of over 400 plus real solutions developed in collaboration with real customers to meet real needs. Many of these needs must also exist in your county, city, and organization. ArcGIS solutions enable your city, county, and organization to meet unmet needs without requiring developer resources. Um, so solutions are great for rapid app development and proof of concept. So you don't need to, if you have our, our solution deployed and, and you're looking to justify for doing some other project, you could use our apps to help you do that without, a, without an investment. Source code for all apps is available on GitHub. So you can copy this down if you'd like. I'll let it sit here for a couple seconds. And this recording will be available, so you'll be able to follow up if there's anything that you missed as we were going through. So our solutions.arcgis.com is where you can go to get these applications. And if you click on local government, it'll sort them because, like I said, there's 400 and some applications out there, and you can get lost in the shuffle. So if you want to maintain a focus, use our um, local government or whatever your um, vertical market is. So we also offer training support, so authoritative resources, thousands of hours of professionally developed and current content, relevant training for your role content for everyone, professionals, students, and educators, many ways to learn, multiple options and formats to meet your needs. We can help you grow, uh, content for all stages along your learning journey. And the link to get there is http you know, www.esri.com forward slash training. We also offer a number of meetups and that you can which I, most of you probably got notification for this webinar, but just for those that didn't, we have land records meetup that's available to you. And then we also offer our land records educational webinar series. So on that note, um, we'd like to leave some time for questions. If you guys would have any questions, um, we'd be like to answer, help you out. Hey, Kevin, one quick one. Do you have a download site for the uh, uh, for the Smart Community Apps poster that opened your presentation? You know, um, I got to get that out. I, I had it. I know we have a copy of it. Um, why don't we can make it available for them to use? Yeah, I'll find it. I got to see if I can find it. I can't. I was looking for it right before we started the webinar, and, I, and then we started, and I didn't get a chance to. All right, let's see. All right. All right, JD, you want to talk about a couple of these questions that had to do with working disconnected, what's cap what the capabilities are and what the limitations are? Sure. Yeah. So uh, there was some some questions about offline, so let's start with collector. So with collector, uh, you can you can take your map app offline depending on how the administrator sets up the uh, sets up the web map and the services that are associated with that map so that data can be taken to the field therefore that would mean that in Kevin's example where he enabled the parcel ID to do a query uh, any data that's in the map that's you know downloaded for that particular area uh, would be searchable Another question was about navigation from Collector. So we don't have really direct navigation when you're disconnected uh, within Collector, but we can integrate our Navigator app, which you can call directly from Collector 
and Navigator allows you to build mobile map packages that would have a geographic area appropriate for, for your study area. You can create um, custom mobile map packages that would include your own parcel data, your own locators. So if you had your own street center lines for, for geocoding or you wanted to take your parcel centroid and create a locator for them, those could be packaged inside that, making uh, searching uh, very simple. And then you could nav navigate from those points within the Navigator app based on the, the street network uh, from point to point. So basically, I'm at this location that you would specify, navigate to my next job, uh, and then a route could be created uh, in an offline form. Mm -hmm. So there was another question about batch assignment for workforce. So uh, one of the things uh, that can be done there is uh, Kevin basically was just interactively clicking on the map for assignment. There's also a rectangle tool where you could draw a box and select a group of things and create a batch assignment. Uh, there's also a way if you'll actually expand uh, the questions window uh, down in there, I responded to one of the questions with a link to GitHub where there are a series of scripts uh, where you can uh, script assignments uh, in a batch form. So the idea would be that you would capture the, the work that needs to be done, the script would process the assignments, and then it would actually create um, basically like an email with a series of links in it that would have all the work that needs to be done uh, and they could just click on that and they could load that into into their their workforce app uh, and get started but you need to you know those are, are going to be fairly customized but it's a great starter uh, we're also considering uh, doing some add-ins for ArcGIS Pro that would allow you to optimize uh, the route that they would need to take to best visit uh, a series of sites so that that could be pre-packaged as part of that assignment so that they could, you know, uh, visit those properties uh, in the best and most logical and optimized order. Nice. Yeah, there's another question about the available apps and tools for improving parcel data and accuracy uh, from, from legacy conversions. The, uh, the parcel fabric itself is designed to improve the accuracy of your data over time. But JD, you want to talk about some of the apps used for cleaning the data and pre preparing it before entering into the fabric? Well, I mean, you know, that's going to be dependent upon, you know, what you're looking for. Are we talking about attribute challenges? Are we talking about topology errors? Um, you know, assessing exactly what level of detail we're trying to search would probably uh, change the tool I would recommend that you would use. So if it would be uh, topology, of course, you can use our out-of-the-box geoprocessing tools to create topology, validate topologies, uh, and that would help you identify specific uh, problems. There are some add-ins that were built for ArcMap that will help you find things where lines are segmented, uh, where uh, curves have been densified. Uh, it's called the Curves and Lines tool. There's also uh, data reviewer, which is an extension for desktop, and there are um, there is a solution that you can download from our solution site for data reviewer that has a whole lot of checks specifically for parcel data to evaluate it before you would migrate that uh, into the fabric or to another system. So it it includes a whole bunch of checks such as parcel number isn't null, for example. Uh, it searches uh, things for, you know, optionally, are there uh, non-numeric characters in the parcel number? Well, that may not apply for some of you, but there's, there's a lot of checks there. There's also checks for spatial checks for, 
for overlaps, for slivers, for gaps, uh, things like that. So data reviewer for parcel data uh, on the solution site would be something you might want to check into. And all those extensions, you know, you can get evaluations for uh, and try these things out uh, as well. All right, here's another question. Um, is the parcel fa fab fabric supported uh, in ArcGIS Pro? Uh, that is no. Uh, the next question, is there a difference of workflow between using ArcGIS Enterprise 10.5 as opposed to the ArcGIS Online? Well, um, let's let's go back to the parcel fabric in ArcGIS Pro first. Uh, I think, um, one, I think from a read perspective, we fully support that. So you should be able to import any map document that has a fabric in it. You can view that data. You can actually put it into scenes and look at it in 3D. So if you had um, condos with unit numbers, you could stack those. You can use the the time slider to look at your history uh, layer. You can use in Pro to create charts. You can also uh, access the range slider uh, to, to, you know, to slide through floors, possibly it, numeric values uh, that are in there. So there's lots of things that you can use a parcel fabric in Pro. Uh, it's not ready for direct editing yet but there's many view query and analysis capabilities that you can fully leverage that uh, in that environment. Uh, the next one is about uh, the differences in workflow. And, you know, it, I guess we'd probably need a little bit more specifics on exactly which uh, aspect you're talking about. But from uh, the perspective of feature services and tiled services and their support in these apps, then there really isn't a huge difference other than where they're stored and, and how they're accessed. So, it, you know, if you wanted to follow up with one of us, maybe offline, we could kind of talk a little bit more in detail about that. But, you know, it's, it's a little vague, I guess, to try to address uh, in this context. All right. Any other questions? If not, we're, uh, we're coming to the top of the hour. I want to thank uh, everyone for attending and thank JD and Kevin for doing all the heavy lifting here. And as always, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us with questions. We we pasted a lot of links into the chat window, so hopefully you can get the resources you'll need for follow-up. Uh, and please join us on our next webinar and keep an eye on the Educational Webinars landing page. Thank you. Thanks.